Mercedes have discovered yet another issue with the W15, and this time it revolves around something they were considered to be pioneers at in the sport, the engine. If the Brackley-based squad cannot work on this issue sooner rather than later, it could mean that the one thing with which they were able to compensate for the lack of downforce requirements on the track might be gone, and they could finish the 2024 season as the worst one since their existence. But while this translates to bad news for Mercedes, it does give them a bit of hope that once this is fixed, they can be fighting in a much more competitive manner. So with this in mind, what is this specific issue that plagues the performance of the W15? Now, if there is one thing that Mercedes can be proud of in Formula 1, it's building engines. They're known for the speed and reliability they provide to the car, which is one of the reasons why Mercedes has the highest number of customer teams on the grid, McLaren, Aston Martin and Williams. However, after the latest statements from the team, it seems like the engine department from Bricksworth has not been up to date with the power unit because the M15, the name of the engine, is not running to its full power thanks to the temperature increases. This could be understood if we delve deeper into the issues that plague Hamilton's race in Australia. Many have seen how the car seemed to be forcefully shut down without any warning coming on his dashboard, which seemed like a very interesting and quite a controversial thing, something that James Allison has opened up about. The technical director of Mercedes admitted that the team had to shut the engine from their side to prevent more damage to it because of the primary reason why the loss of power occurred, which was a fatal lack of oil pressure. Yes, this factor risks massive damage to the endothermic engine, and it could very well mean that the team would have been forced to use another aggregate for the upcoming race, but they could have simply prevented the issue, just like they did in Australia, but it points to a very negative trend in Mercedes, the reliability of their engines. Although many would love to discuss how this is a casual and quite common mistake for Mercedes, there are a couple of facts that go against that narrative. For example, there was a thesis that the mechanics didn't properly top up the car with oil, but this is automatically dismissed because had this been the case, the numerous sensors in the car would have warned the team that something was not in the right place. Another thesis revolves around the wrong engine cover, but if we are to look at the other challenges, especially Red Bull, we would see that it doesn't really make a lot of sense to pin the blame on this particular part of the car. On top of that, the bonnets on the other challenges on the grid were even narrower and had a number of slits to extract the heat produced by the lower electromechanical components. And the fact that their customer teams have also experienced the same issues goes to say that times are not really the brightest right now for Mercedes. We're also missing a lot of data when it comes to relating the engine failure with an electrical issue or a system malfunction that inevitably created an imbalance in the car. So we're coming to one logical answer in our mind, a reliability issue. A couple of months ago, Mercedes made a total reshuffle of their internal components, which are hidden under the bodywork. And considering the fact that the car has lots of new aerodynamic surfaces due to the new concept, these components are not able to guarantee that the engine would reach the necessary optimal temperature range. Therefore, the team is not really able to push the engine to its absolute maximum, meaning that cranking it up and trying to extract maximum performance out of it is definitely not what the engineers have in mind due to the fact that if they do so, the engine would fail much earlier than lap 11 in Melbourne. So, the cruel truth is that both Mercedes drivers were forced to drive with limited performance of the engine, and this is an issue that is currently being worked on in Bricksworth, which is the first good news that Mercedes have received for the future, apart from the interesting pattern Allison found regarding the temperatures of the track as well as the performance of the car, which could also contribute to the issue that happens with the engine. Now, if we are to analyse the instability of the car, we would be looking at a very interesting pattern. When the car turns right, it suffers from a very light rear end and an understeer on its way. But when the load of the car shifted to the left, it tended to slide on the asphalt and generate oversteer, something that Karun Chandok from Sky F1 elaborated on. It could very well mean that these issues, in combination with the engine problems that the team has recently experienced, are putting Mercedes in a very bad situation for what is supposed to come, and that's the upgrade scheduled for April. In April, we're poised to see a different version of the W15, not by the looks, but by the performance of it. But in order for them to fix this, they would have to work on another fundamental issue that's preventing them from bringing competitive upgrades to the car, and that's the correlation between wind tunnel data and on-track performance. On top of that, Mercedes does seem to have a lot of issues when it comes to starting the weekend in one note during the free practice sessions, 
and that tends to change extremely fast and even become confusing during the Saturday and Sunday events. Obviously, Mercedes is starting the sessions very well and competitively, but once all masks are out during qualifying and race day, the team vanishes in the midfield, and according to Allison, this happens due to the evolution of the track as well as the temperatures on it that lead to excessive tyre wear and imbalanced aeroflow. And this is a very big issue because it does prevent the team from bringing upgrades to the car before they fix the problem in question. And to make it even worse, Total Wolf has opened up about the lack of synchronization between the wind tunnel and the on-track performance, something to which he added, Fundamentally, whatever we see in the tunnel doesn't correlate with what's happening on the track. It's not a single person who says, I would interpret that data in this way, and because of dogma, we're not making any progress. I don't see dogmatism. I see an open environment where people share, where people take themselves by the nose and say, maybe in my area, we're making mistakes. Again, if you look at the W15, you would find a car that has lots of deficits at the rear end, which makes the front end too pointy, even though the team introduced what was dubbed to be a revolutionary approach in the sport, a new front wing and an adjustable wishbone on the front suspension. Regardless, the car, although Wolf feels like it has taken a huge step forward, is nowhere near fighting the podiums, let alone race wins, and as of now, they're just one point ahead of Aston Martin for the P4 battle, with both McLaren and Ferrari having a much steadier and far more stable platform to work on. Now, Suzuka will present yet another massive challenge for Mercedes, because although the temperatures of the track as well as the air will be kinder to the W15, the high-speed nature of the track is poised to give both Russell and Hamilton a lot of headaches, especially in the first sector. If the team is not able to push the car, or more precisely its engine, to its absolute maximum, then we're going to see another great deficit in performance compared to the top three teams. What Mercedes needs to do here is understand the behaviour of its two suspensions, because as of now, the engineers back in Brackley and Bricksworth have not been able to optimise the working range of the new kitomatic design of the rear axle that's been adopted to a pushrod scheme. The fact that the rear suspension is a pushrod scheme goes to show that the stiffness to alleviate understeer and keep the platform as stable as possible has different requirements in all gear ranges of the vehicle. Furthermore, if the team is able to modify the inclinations of the two wishbones as well as the pushrod, then the tyres have the potential to find themselves in a much more optimised window where they'll be able to put more energy that have less degradation. But from what we can see and hear from Mercedes, the team will be working on making the front end less pointy and unbalance the car towards the rear, which would enable them to limit the oversteer they're struggling with. With all this in mind, what do you think about the recent issues of Mercedes engine? And more importantly, do you think that there is a solution peeking at the end of the tunnel? Let us know in the comments down below.